Okay, this is take two of properties of light. Um, the first one was completely lost for some reason, but uh, anyway, we'll get over that. I'll get over that. So, uh, what we want to look at first of all is um, light. Is it travels in straight lines. Visible light travels in straight lines, and we can we can see this if we look at a pinhole camera. So you can get a, a tube of some sort. I'll, I'll leave it up to your imagination where you find a tube. And you stick some black paper uh, over one end. You probably want to hold it on with a rubber band or something like that. And then you have some white paper at the other end. Um, and then you need to make a pinhole uh, in, in this part here. So use a pin. This is where it gets named pinhole. Because, uh, pinhole camera because it uses a pin uh, to make a hole in the camera. And then uh, we have uh, how it works to show that light um, travels in straight lines. We have an object here and we have light rays traveling from that object from the top going down through the pinhole onto the screen and we represent light rays by drawing an arrow on the light ray that shows the direction and also from the bottom of the object through the hole and to the top of the screen so the light rays from the bottom are here at the top and the light rays from the top are here at the bottom so what we would see projected on the screen is an upside down version of the object we would call that the image eye um, and as I said, we represent our objects and images by arrows. We also draw arrows on our lines to show the direction that they're traveling in. Now, uh, this illustrates the straight line, that light travels in straight lines because the image is upside down. If the image wasn't upside down, um, then that would show us that light actually bends because the top, uh, the light coming from the top would be able to go through and then bend up to come through. And the light from the bottom would be able to go through the pinhole and bend down. But it doesn't, that goes straight through in both and shows us this inverted uh, image over here. Let's just shrink that down and out of the way. So if you're looking at it from the end, um, this is looking at it in, in that way, um, you would see an upside down image of your object over there. Okay, so there's your pinhole camera sort of 3D attempt vague. Anyway, that's what it would look like. You can try that for yourself. Um, very good. I think the white paper, um, you can get some grease paper that you'd use for baking, like baking paper. That would be also a very useful one to do. Okay, so light travels in straight lines. We've established that. What speed does light go? Um, light travels at the speed of light, which has a special symbol C because it's such an important number in physics. It's a fundamental constant. Um, and it is an absolute limit to the speed that anything can travel in the universe. Einstein came up with that, and the speed, the number, is 3.00. It doesn't seem very big, but it's times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's really fast. That's 300 million meters in one second. So that's 300 thousand kilometers in one second. So if you picture the distance of 100 kilometers from some trip from one place to another that you recognize. It is uh, three million times that journey in one second. Wow. Okay, and also to provide comparison, the speed of sound um, is a little over 300 meters per second. About, so depending on the atmospheric conditions, is the speed of sound in air 330 meters per second. Okay, so the speed of light is about a million times faster than the speed of sound, which is why you see lightning um, striking, so you see it, before you hear it. And if you, if you count, say going one, two, three, um, you can actually work out the distance approximately um, that it is away from you. So this is the thunder that you hear. Uh, so um, your thunder, your... Uh, if you count 1, 2, 3, at 330 meters per second, that's around about 1 kilometer. Um, and the reason we can do this is because the lightning here, that is uh, almost instantaneous because it travels 1 kilometer in a fraction of a, the tiniest fraction of a second. Um, probably milliseconds. That seems about right, milliseconds. Um, or nanoseconds, even, even smaller. But either way, it travels it almost instantly, but the sound is so much slower, 
even that's still pretty fast, but 330 meters per second. Um, and yeah, so you can count one, two, three, three seconds. 330 meters per second is about 1,000 meters in, one, in three seconds. And you know that the storm or where the lightning struck from the storm is not far away. And you should probably go inside out of the rain. Uh, anyway, medium. Uh, now we know that light uh, travels in straight lines, but that's not strictly true. Um, light is also behaves as a wave. Um, and waves require a medium for them to uh, to work. And, and waves can bend. Okay, not not as much as um, what the pinhole camera the pinhole camera would still give an upside down image for light, even if it uh, bent um, in the way that a wave does, which it, it does. But okay, <laughs> confusing the issue. Don't want to confuse you. Visible light travels essentially in a straight line, so that for all purposes that we're considering, basically travels in a straight line. If you shine a laser, you can't shine your laser around corners. Okay, that's the whole idea. It travels in straight lines. However, there are slight bending effects, and they will be presented in future videos um, to do with waves. So don't worry about it for now, but just remember light travels in straight lines. But when it's behaving as a wave, um, <laughs> sometimes light doesn't behave as a wave under certain conditions. And we get into that too with the dual, dual nature of uh, light. You'll have to search that one on the site to find out more though. Um, this is the fun part of physics. But anyway, light um, and waves, uh, and light being a wave a, a lot of the time, um, you'd think it requires a medium, but it actually doesn't. So for light, there is no medium. No medium at all for light. Um, they used to think that there must be, since light behaved as a wave, that when it was travelling through the universe, for that energy to be transferred from one position to the other, that it had to be a wave, um, which it behaved as wave, and that that wave had to uh, be in a medium, and they called that the ether, A-E-T-H-E-R, I think that's right. Um, and um, they've done experiments since to show that there is no ether, and that light just travels through a vacuum, which is empty space. <sighs> How do you deal with that? Oh, I don't know. But it's exciting and interesting. Um, so light is a good field for study if you want to discover some of the foundation uh, fundamental things in the universe. Moving on, light is also, when you're considering it as a wave, is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, we'd have this this whole spectrum, uh, EM standing for electromagnetic. That's because light. Uh, when you look at the waves part, um, there's a little bit of intro that gets into that. But light has electric and magnetic properties, um, and what we talk about is light is really only one part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's this, this section in the middle of visible visible light. Um, and we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, which is your traditional Roigi biv, visible light. Okay, and then further up this way, uh, to the left of my diagram, you've got um, the higher red, or the invisible red, or the infrared, and there's there's a spectrum that an infrared which continues in that way. When you're going this way, it continues further, and you've got because remember we're at the red end, so we've got infrared, and we're at the violet end now, so we've actually got ultraviolet. Okay, so we're going higher up, and we've got ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is a higher energy. That's why you get sunburn from ultraviolet rays and not from visible light, in part. And um, further down this higher energy, um, you've also got uh, things like um, X-rays. Let's write that in. X-rays. X-rays are dangerous, so you shouldn't try. You shouldn't get too many of those. You've got gamma rays, which is um, uh, radioactive elements. Sometimes give off gamma rays. Um, and uh, at the other end of the spectrum, further into the infrared, we have some more low intensity ones like microwaves. Okay, microwaves run out of puff really quick um, when they're in an atmosphere or, or something like that, but um, good for cooking, produce a lot of heat. So this is, this is quite um, 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, radio waves as well. Actually, your microwaves, they're an interesting one because a microwave, um, if I understand it right, uses alpha particles to heat your food. And the microwaves are a um, byproduct of that. I'm going to investigate that because it's interesting. But anyway, radio waves, which are a much, uh, uh, what have we got, longer wavelength. So the wavelength is higher at this end. And the wavelength is lower at this end, but the frequency is higher at this end, and the frequency is lower at this end. So you can see there's sort of an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. But all of these things travel at the speed of light, because they're all light, but they're just not all visible light. So they all travel at C. And there is a wave equation which links them, I'll just give it to you now, V equals F lambda. Lambda being the wavelength, f being the frequency of the light, and v being the velocity, which in this case is c. So you could rewrite this as c equals f lambda, and that gives you all the information that you ever need to calculate. Um, yeah. Go away and research microwaves, and come and tell me about them. That'll be fantastic. Join the forum, put all the information there, and uh, you can teach me about microwaves. I don't know a lot about them.